So um, in this section, we are going to um, get started with Gem 5. And most importantly, this is really just to make sure we can get a shared development environment working for everybody. Um, and then Bobby will come up and start talking about, um, we're going to do a quick uh, Python overview, because we're going to do a lot of Python programming. So just to give you some reminders about Python after this. OK, so we're going to hit the ground running. Um, in this example, what we're going to do is show how to obtain Gem 5, how to build Gem 5, although we're not going to build Gem 5 right now, and then run, uh, well, we're going to say a Hello World simulation, but really this simulation is going to start booting Linux uh, for us. Um, so often, you know, it's a stumbling block to figure out how to get Gem 5 um, and build Gem 5. There's a lot of complicated stuff behind the scenes. We'll explain that uh, later. OK. So this is typically how you would uh, install Gem5. Again, don't do this right now. Um, so Gem5 is not a typical software project. You can't just say apt install Gem5. Gem5 is distributed as source code. I will be honest, this is something I really want to change. But it's not a short-term thing. So in, for those of you who are students, in the time that you're a student, I don't think this is going to change. But maybe in the next 10 years. So uh, our main um, Gem5 repository is on GitHub, which actually did change in the last year. We used to be on another service called Google Source. Um, so you can clone it from GitHub. Um, and when you do that, there are two branches that you'll find, hopefully just two. Um, there's the stable branch, which is what you should be using um, when you're doing research with Gem5. It's updated at stable releases. We're currently on uh, version 24.0. And then there's the develop branch. So the develop branch is the development for the next re release of Gem5. Um, things are changing on develop quite often. Develop breaks. It, it's pretty stable, but it breaks more often than we would like it to. Um, and so if you're doing something for a research project, I would strongly encourage you to use stable unless you know that there's something on develop that you have to have. So in this tutorial, we're going to be giving you a cloud environment for you to use. Um, using GitHub code spaces, um, with a repository that contains a bunch of examples, and Gem5 uh, using stable version uh, 24.0. So real quick on uh, Gem5 versions. So on the stable branch, there's going to be a tag for each release. Um, we release Gem5 typically two or three times a year. Our goal was three times a year. The past couple of years, I think we've only made two. So two to three times a year. We don't have a strict schedule with when we release. It's kind of when I feel like pushing for a release. Um, you know, there's no like big feature that we're going for or particular bug fix or anything. It's just kind of, oh, it's been like four or five months since the last release. Let's do another one. Um, so the release names are named for the year of the release and the number in that year. So V24.0 was the first release um, in 2024. Thanks. Um, so we have this full version string, which is v24.0.0.0. The other zeros, or the last two zeros, are for a minor release and hotfix releases. We try not to do minor releases or hotfix releases, but uh, sometimes it happens. If you want to read the nitty gritty details of how we did this, uh, check out the contributing uh, document. OK, so let's use uh, code spaces. So before doing anything else, go to this classroom link here. So this classroom.github.com slash a slash gcc, I don't know if that's an L or an I. Um, go to this slide on the Bootcamp website and click this link. So everyone needs to, click, needs to click this link, accept the invite, log into GitHub. Um, if you don't, you will get charged for the code space. If you click this link, it will be free. And we use a, real, a pretty beefy code space, so you'll run out of your free allocations quickly and start to be charged. Um, so I'm going to leave this up for a minute. Um, everyone in the back and Bobby, if anybody's having trouble, raise your hand, and we will come around and help. So if you click this link, I will click it and see what happens. Um, it should say, accept this assignment. You accept that, and it's going to create a repository for you. 
ignore that repository that it creates. All right, I'm going to move on to the next step. So the next step is to go to this repository, the Gem5 Bootcamp slash 2024. So we're going to go to this repository. Um, so github.com slash Gem5 Bootcamp slash 2024. Make it a bit bigger for everybody. Um, and once you're here, you're going to click this code button and then create a new code space on main with this plus button. After that, it will open up in a new tab, and it should look like Visual Studio Code. So once you're in the code space, I want to point out a few, um, a few things to navigate the repository. So you should have a Gem5 directory, and this includes the Gem5 source, uh, version 24.0. A Gem5 resources directory, um, we'll get to Gem5 resources uh, this afternoon. Um, these two are sub-repositories that just point to other, uh, both the Gem5 and Gem5 re uh, resources repositories in the Gem5 organization. You should see a slides directory, which is all of the slides that we have been going through. So for instance, if you go to get it start, getting started, you should see um, this preview button up here. Um, if you're using the web interface, you'll definitely see it. If you're using your local VS Code, you might need to install some extensions. Um, you can click this, and you can also follow along the slides um, here as well. Um, the other directory I want to draw your attention to is materials. So the slides are organized by different sections. Uh, the materials are organized in the same way. The materials is where all of the code templates are going to be as we uh, start doing the live coding examples. Um, there's some other stuff in this um, repository as well. You can ignore most of the other things. Some of it is uh, legacy. Some of it is used to render the website. OK. So we are going to skip building Gem5 now, because in this code space, assuming you can connect to it, um, we have a number of Gem5 binaries pre-built for you, so we don't have to take the time to do that. So um, we are going to dive straight in and write our first um, Gem5 uh, run script. So if you go to materials, 01 introduction, because we're in the intro introduction section, 02 getting started, there's a basic.py file. So we are going to uh, do one of the most basic uh, Gem5 scripts you can write. We're going to start booting Linux. But since booting Linux takes a while because Gem5 is slow, um, we're only going to simulate um, about 20 milliseconds um, and then kind of see what happens here. So we already have, oh, let me turn off um, Copilot. Uh, if you have GitHub Copilot, I will just briefly say it's amazing. Um, it will, like, autocomplete most of your Gem5 scripts for you. You can also tell it, I want to do this thing in Gem5, and it'll write the code for you. Um, Copilot knows a lot about Gem5. Um, but I'm going to turn it off so you don't see my autocomplete. Um, otherwise, I just would autocomplete everything. OK, so we've already imported some things from the Gem5 standard library here. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, use one of our pre-built boards from the standard library. So we are going to create a board, and it's going to be an x86 demo board. So this x86 demo board is just a demo. Don't use it for your research. Um, so it has a single channel of uh, DDR3 memory. Um, it has a four core, three gigahertz processor using a really simple timing model, uh, in order model from Gem5. Uh, two level cache hierarchy with private L1, private L2, and a shared L, sorry, private L1's I, private L1D, and a shared L2. Um, and it runs in full system mode. So that's what's inside the demo board. If you want more information, you should be able to hover over it. Um, it actually tells you what uh, parameters you can pass to it, or go to the definition, and you can see the definition of this as well. Um, so that's our board that we're going to use. Um, and then we are going to take this board and set a workload to run. And the workload that we're going to use is x86 Ubuntu 
2404 boot no systemd. So we're going to do a workload that's going to boot the most recent version of Ubuntu. And we're going to boot uh, without doing all the systemd stuff um, as well. If you want to see where this workload comes from, um, so I, I'm going to jump over to um, my browser. So if you are not keeping up with these few characters I've typed, you can look in the slides, and it has all this code as well. So you can copy paste from the slides. Um, so if we go to uh, resources.gem5.org, so this is where all the resources are, including workloads. Search for this workload. Click here, and we can actually copy that tag. Um, but so this resource is a full boot of Ubuntu 24.04 using 5.04, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's more information uh, coming this afternoon about how to use these things. OK, so we have this workload set. And now what we need to do is simulate it. So we are going to create a simulator. Um, and we want the board for the simulator to be this board that we're using. And then we're going to do sim.run. Um, but we are just going to run 20 milliseconds. So as I mentioned before, ticks are one picosecond. This run takes in a number of picoseconds. So 20 billion ticks is equivalent to 20 milliseconds. Um, and that's it. So now that we've done that, we can open our terminal. Change directories to this directory. So this is, zero, um, this is materials, 0, 1, introduction, 0, 2, getting started. Um, and then we can run Gem 5. Let me do this. We'll run Gem 5 basic.py. So we'll see this in the next section, but this Gem 5 binary, um, which is pre compiled for you, um, it essentially is a Python interpreter. So you pass Gem 5 the Python file you want to execute. You want to execute basic.py. And I did something wrong. Oh, sorry. We need to run this with a different Gem5 binary, Gem5 MESI. So already on our first example, we have a typo. So somebody in the back, Aaron, you're very good at taking notes. Will you note down that? this command was wrong in the slides. OK, so run Gem5, nope. Dang it. Now what's going on? Well, now I'm nervous. Oh, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> So if I had copy-pasted from the slides, like I suggested you do, I would have gotten that correct. So the workload that we're setting, we need to obtain the resource, not just pass in the name of the resource. So now, it's going to say x86 demo report is solely for demonstration purposes. And it's going to sit here for a minute at the info using default configuration, because we're downloading this multi-gigabyte disk image from uh, Gem 5's resources repository, um, and also downloading the kernel. So we'll sit here, wait a minute, and then it should run. So eventually, it'll start printing lots of stuff. Um, and then this will take about, what did I say, maybe about a minute to run? About a minute to run. So I'll sit here and wait for about a minute for it to complete. OK. So now that this is run, um, what you will notice is that there is now an m5 out directory in the same uh, in the directory that you were in, and m5 out has a bunch of stuff that was uh, generated. 
One of them is this board.pc.com device. So this is the serial device that was connected, and so this is printing whatever Linux prints when it starts to boot up. So you see that it's, uh, it prints the supported CPUs from the kernel, the BIOS provided physical RAM map, and actually started doing uh, some Linux boot before we stopped 20 milliseconds into the process. You'll also notice a file called citations.bib. This is an automatically generated file that goes through whatever, like all the components you're using in your simulation and will pull out the correct citations for you to use in your paper. So when you say, I use Gem5, you can cite these things. Um, so for instance, it's the Gem5 paper, the Gem520 paper, and in this case, it should also be the DRAM controller paper as well, because we were using the DRAM controller. And by the way, if you or other people you know have contributed to things Gem5 that are not in the citations.bib, uh, let me know and we can add it. And then there's also these config.ini and config.json files, which I think I um, alluded to before, which specifies all the parameters and all the different models um, in the system. And the reason why we don't use these declarative things is for this simple system, it's 11,000 lines to declare. Um, and then most importantly is stats.txt. So this is where the statistics output um, is for the simulation. So this has important statistics like the number of simulated seconds. So we ran for 20 milliseconds. Luckily, this says 20 milliseconds. Um, it says the number of instructions that were executed. So we executed about 7 million instructions during this time. Um, and it you know, adds other things like the performance of the simulator. So 30 seconds is how long it took to run. And then as you go through here, it has many other statistics as well. So for instance, the core IPC. Um, this core's IPC was pretty low, which isn't very surprising, seeing as it was a in-order CPU when we were doing a bunch of memory accesses to boot up. OK, so this is the output of Gem5, is all these uh, different things in M5 out. And that's what these, all these slides are doing. Um, OK, um, and there's also another couple things in there that uh, visualize the configuration for you as well in the config.pdf uh, or, or SVG. OK, so that's it with getting started. That was a little bit rougher than I was hoping, but I think we got there. So um, some quick takeaways. So the Gem5 binary is a Python interpreter, which we'll see more in the next section. And again, the interface to Gem5 is these Python scripts. Excuse me. Gem5 contains a bunch of Python libraries. So the things like x86 board, if you were to try that to execute that with Python, it wouldn't work, because there is no Python, Python module called Gem5. You have to use the Gem5 binary to execute it. Um, we saw that the output of Gem5 is in M5out by default which is a lot of details of the configuration, other output, like the, ter the terminal output, and statistics, which is what we really care about um, as architects. And then we used code spaces. I clearly wrote this slide before we tried it. It was supposed to make things easy, but hopefully the rest of the week it will be smooth. <laughs>